Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, our Let's Play series, um, playing against Lodric here. It is April 15th, 1942, and we are entering a phase which I am thinking will probably be a couple of days of things being a little bit quieter uh, as we kind of work through kind of an informal uh, ceasefire, if you will, between Lodric and myself, but there will still be some action going on. You can see the submarine war continues, uh, and a Dutch submarine there, uh, firing some torpedoes against some Japanese minesweepers, I think those are, uh, to no effect. Um, but, you know, uh, the sub-war continues, as I said. Um, I don't think we'll see a ton of, at least on my end, not a ton of offensive air uh, and we are moving some ships around, so I'll talk about some of the, the changes that we're looking at pushing forward here and taking uh, taking some opportunity to shore up our position in a couple of different places across the map. Um, let's see here. We'll also kind of keep an eye on where maybe ships might be moving, perhaps indicating what our new opponent is thinking. And we got a Mark 14 hit! A single torpedo into the side of a Japanese merchant uh, ship, the Mogamiawa Maru. Uh, a single Mark 14 torpedo hit. It fired two, the Stingray, fired two torpedoes at this merchant ship. It's just north of Borneo um, to the east of Singapore there. So that's the first Mark 14 hit we've had, I think, in a while. Um, the trigger is firing, oh, a hit but no explosion, just to the south of Japan against the Rizuku, Ri, oh god, Ryuzan Maru. Um, so it looks like we fired two torpedoes there, one of them struck the ship but did not detonate. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, we've got a patrol boat engaging some Japanese ships off the coast of Java here. One of these looks like an oiler. This guy here, this big one, although our ships are out of fuel and I don't even know if they have any torpedoes, so I can't imagine we'll actually fight at all. Um, it looks like the Allied Task Force is attempting to disengage anyway. It's a couple of uh, patrol boats and a Japanese oiler, the Kokumaru, just to the east of uh, Java near Surab Surabaya. I wonder which direction they're going. We'll have to see. Maybe we could get an airstrike on them. I, you know, we are in a quiet phase, if you will. But if we see targets moving around and, and, you know, in the open, I don't see a reason why we couldn't necessarily launch a small strike. Oilers and, and tankers are not exactly the, the most uh, um, common of targets, and they're certainly very valuable. So... Uh, 31 Japanese Nels flying out of Rabal, hitting uh, troops north of Moresby. I thought we had everybody out of there, but there might be some support troops left. Uh, it looks like 120, 132 casualties. They're all non-combatant squads, so I'm guessing those are support troops. All completely out of supply, too, so they're in the process of wasting away. And a lone Japanese dive bomber strike against some troops of ours in China. That's just target practice for them. We also have, I continue, I keep forgetting to tell my SB3s to stop bombing these Japanese troops opposite of the river in central China. But I keep forgetting to do that, and they keep bombing these guys to no real effect. Hey, Flying Scotsman. Nine Blenheims here are attacking some Japanese troops to the east of Pegu. Uh, looks like it's the 21st Imperial Japanese Army Division here, located here, so that's some good intelligence to have. Just west of Chiang Mai. And I think that's about it for that air operation phase, at least for the day phase. We'll move into the, the PM phase. Doesn't look like any additional strikes are going to occur. Mostly just some recon. So, a very quiet turn. We do have a Japanese delivered attack to the east of Yichang. It looks like they are moving it toward Yichang in central China. We don't really have anything to stop them there. It's kind of a starving core. 13 to 1. So, they're shot to pieces and fall back to Yichang. And that's it for the turn. So, a couple of fortifications and airfields expanding. 
but uh, a very quiet turn, as I said, to expect. So we'll take a look at a couple of things as we get uh, out of the turn, uh, out of the replay and into the turn, um, and see what's going on. So if we take a look at the turn, uh, we can see here in terms of air operations, very few casualties. It looks like two aircraft lost this turn, one for the Japanese, one for the Allies. Uh, the Japanese lost a Jake, and the Allies lost a Catalina, both to operational losses. Uh, but that's it. Despite quite a few sorties being flown, our pilot and crew was okay. Ship sunk this turn. No indication of anything. I didn't hear any gurgling either after the, the merchant ship was hit, so it probably didn't sink, at least not yet. Uh, if we go back to Borneo here, we can see it looks like this group is moving west. So a couple of tankers in this group, um, which is where the Stingray is. Um, another merchant task force moving west here. So I'm guessing they're moving down maybe towards Sumatra or toward Java to maybe pull some fuel out of there. Um, if we take a look at the other area, I think we have this PT boat engaged this Japanese task force moving west as well. Why would they be moving west? I guess maybe out of this way and then I'm not sure. That's weird. Um, so yeah, that's happening. Uh, 2% more fortification built. I don't think he's going to give me 25 days to get up to level five forts at Batavia, but it is what it is. Uh, if we take a look at Rangoon, I think we have some transports unloading some cargo here. We've got 11,000 cargo currently unloading uh, at the docks here. Almost done. Oh, actually, we're about halfway done on some of these merchant ships here. We've already unloaded about 8,000 there. Uh, and then this other merchant ship here, or this other task force here, is about three, uh, about three tenths or four tenths of the way unloaded. Sorry, left. Um, uh, so 60% unloaded. Uh, of about 5,000 cargo that's that's being unloaded, although they're not, oh, they are docked as well. Uh, so we are continuing to pour supply into Burma. Um, as long as the enemy air force allows us to, we will continue to put as much supply into the Burma theater as we can to try and flow things toward China. I would like to get rid of some of that fuel in Rangoon, but it produces fuel, so I don't know that that's gonna gonna happen here. But we've got about 90,000 supply at Rangoon, about 13,000 at Pegu. It does look like he's pulled some of his troops out of Molmon just to the south here. So it would be nice to take Molmon uh, to, to maybe take away a potential resupply sector if he were to start bombarding our troops uh, further north. Um, but I think we'll hold off for now because if we do launch an attack right now, that'll probably trigger a response by him. Um, sooner rather than later and I'd rather keep things somewhat quiet in Burma as long as as long as we can it kind of suits us and one of the reasons for that is we actually have some troops incoming to Rangoon um, we've got the 23rd British Brigade here on these uh, cargo ships uh, on the way into Rangoon you can see they're moving at flank speed now uh, which will allow them to move what is it six hexes per phase so one two three four five wait. so they'll be just southwest of rangoon in the day phase and then i think they'll pull into rangoon at night uh, so it'll be nice if those merchant ships unload more of their cargo while they can and then we have some artillery units um, as well also on the way in um, which i think should get there at night as well um, and it looks like we've got some, or actually these are heavy anti-aircraft and an Indian, I think, uh, construction company. Um, so that should be nice to get some additional flak into Rangoon for when the air war does start as well. Um, we have some ships. I think we've got another brigade somewhere coming in. Uh, yeah. We've got the 14th British Brigade as well as some recce forces uh, and some RAF base forces also on the way down, although they're currently tasked to go to Colombo, uh, so we could reinforce there. And uh, that's the situation in Burma. Uh, in China, it looks like he's still redeploying his troops, so it looks like the armor has pulled back. Most of it is, is outside of our recon area. So he had his whole armored fist. It was approaching Cyan, and as soon as Lodric took over, he started pulling these guys back to the east. We'd been bombing them to try and slow them down, but no indication of where they are now. Um, so 
I'm not sure. One thing that does make me a little uneasy is, so, like, there's two places that I would worry. One, it looks like he's still holding his troops at Quilin, so we thought they were pulling out, but uh, I don't see the little indicator that these troops are pulling out anymore. So he could be moving his armor down to Quilin, uh, which would then allow him to push up sort of through the soft underbelly of, of China toward Kuiyang and then eventually Chungking from the south. Um, we have some troops at Quilin, probably enough to defend, but not enough to hold off against a massive armored fist. And once he breaks through that first line, there's probably not another place for us to stop him. Oops. Um, you know, there's some terrain maybe up here as we kind of get into these hills or if he comes up this, this causeway here, but not really like enough troops anywhere. And I don't know where he would go. Um, but the alternative is that he could also make a push in central China. If he were to move toward Yi Chang, he could take Yi Chang. And then there is kind of like this potential where he could maybe hop through this mountain region here. It doesn't look like there's a supply sector here, but I, I suppose he could jump from this hex to here and maybe pull supply through the mountains there and make a move through sort of completely undefended central China, although that's probably not ideal for armor to try and do that. Um, he did pull back east from Chicky King. That is true. Um, so that actually just happened this turn. So that's that's a good call out as well, uh, Evoke. And uh, he had units here, and it looks like he pulled them back. I'm not sure where to, uh, but the center, central front is now empty for the moment. Uh, we do have level five forts at Chicky Kong, so potentially we could move some of these troops. Um, not a ton of them, though, because again, if he comes knocking, we need to we need to have sufficient troops to stop him. Um, we do have troops to the northeast, but these guys have been dug in here for a while, so they've actually got like level three forts in rough terrain and a non base hex. If I move them, they lose that. Um, so that's uh, that's something to consider as well. Um, so that's the situation in China. It doesn't look like anything's changed in the Philippines other than my troops are, you know, starving more. Um, uh, the, the most powerful divisions for the most part still have sufficient supplies, but that's going to dwindle quickly. Not sure how long we can expect to hold there. Like if he's not going to attack us and he's just going to let us waste away, maybe two weeks, I would guess, maybe get us to May. Um, uh, but it's going to be, it's going to be close. Um, let's see here move further south what about those troops that got bombed north of moresby yeah just a handful of disabled support units here of the 15th raf base force not a lot to write home about them uh, we probably need to push some supply into horn island also because we did we did put some coastal guns there and those guys need some supplies so we should push some some supplies forward either via submarine or something um, we are loading some fuel on some uh, AOs. Actually, I think these guys are unloading. Uh, oh, they're loading. I think it's probably a good idea to get some fuel on one of these like faster AOs that we have at, at Perth to try and get them up toward like maybe the plate with well, its 18 knots to get them up toward the carriers, which are still at Colombo. Wouldn't be a bad idea to have a fleet oiler nearby, uh, but we are doing some uh, some upgrade work on the carriers. So the Enterprise and the Yorktown are both due for a upgrade, uh, which will replace their half inch um, anti aircraft guns with twenty millimeter Orlicons. Um, and fortunately, that upgrade only takes about a week, so that upgrade has been triggered. Um, so both the Enterprise and Yorktown are currently in dry dock or I, I guess technically pier side, but they are currently being repaired at Colombo in Sri Lanka. Uh, and so in about six more days, they'll be out with greatly upgraded anti-aircraft guns, uh, having those Orlicons replace uh, the uh, the half inch, the, what are they, the telephone poles or whatever they're called. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that's going on right now. The other carriers are due for upgrades. So like the Lexington and the Saratoga are due for upgrades as well. Uh, but those upgrades are going to take a lot longer so it's not i don't think it's just the anti-aircraft being upgraded but it's also i think do they remove the five the five inch guns or at least some of them or i guess they remove the eight inch guns so those upgrades are going to take like i think 20 days 
or something like that. So we haven't pulled those carriers out of the line yet. Um, so that's something we'll have to think about. I don't know if the British carriers get upgrades. It looks like they do, but not till 43. So that doesn't really matter right now. Um, good news on the repair front. If we go to Cape Town, uh, the battleship or battle cruiser repulse is only eight days away from being being completed. Uh, we switched her over to pier side because we can finish the last two remaining engine damage uh, at pier side, and then it's going to switch over to systems damage. So this is being worked on at pier side. Unfortunately, it is still going to be 250 days for the Prince of Wales to come back. She's still got a lot of float and engine damage, so she's out of out of the fight for a while. But at least the repulse is getting very close to coming back online and uh, giving us uh, a fast battle cruiser to move either with our carriers or uh, perhaps launch some bombardment attacks or, or what have you. Um, I think the Hornet is still just chilling in Pearl. I, I, I need to figure out what to do with her. Um, you know, she's the one carrier not in the Indian Ocean. It would take a really long time to get her to the Indian Ocean. But a one carrier task force at Pearl, other than maybe being a diversion and then like doing a small low risk raid that might make him think the carriers are somewhere that they're not. Uh, I'm not sure what to really do uh, with uh, with with her. Um So, uh, meanwhile, we are moving some troops around. I did show those British brigades that are moving. We also have some troops incoming, I think. Uh, 13,000 troops here, uh, some separate infantry battalions, some aviation support, some marine units, uh, and some fighter groups as well, all on the way to India um, to reinforce it. Uh, 13,000 American troops there. Now there's 7,000 in this task force with a tank battalion uh, as well as a combat engineered uh, battalion and an infantry battalion. So about 20,000 American troops currently on the way to uh, India. Um, these guys are they are off map. They're going to arrive on map in 16 days. So they're still, still a ways away, uh, a couple of weeks uh, for these guys. Uh, these guys are moving off map, arrival on map in four days. So the tank battalion and the infantry right, battalion and... Uh, fighter group here um, are going to be moving out of the map in the next uh, four days. So they're actually not too far away. That'll be nice. Um, one other thing here is uh, we have, I think it's the 7th Armored Brigade uh, is on its way into Burma. And you can see here they have 74 morale and 73 experience. These guys experienced troops from the desert, 100 Stuart light tanks with these guys. Wouldn't be great against, you know, German armor, but against the armor that the Japanese might be likely to throw at us in Burma, uh, this this unit could be a game changer. So uh, with that experience and that morale level, they're, they're moving down. We also have another armored brigade. I think it's south of Pegu here, the 254th Armored Brigade. Uh, they're not very good. <laughs> their experience is 33 and their morale is 36, so pretty bad. But they do have an additional 26 Stuart tanks. Uh, in theory, they can have up to 150 tanks, 100 Valentines, and 50 Stuarts. So that could be a pretty damn kick-ass OOB. Um, but right now, they have 26 Stuarts, 11 Vickers tankettes, uh, and 27 improved AFVs. But the, the 27 Stuarts is still a nice thing to have. And the 28 eight, 1942 Indian infantry sections also. But these guys got to be pulled out of the line. we got to arrest them. Probably pull them back to Rangoon, let them kind of get their morale back up, flooded with supply, maybe get some of these units to fill out the OOB a bit. I think we do have some Valentines in the pools as well, perhaps to replace those Vicar tankettes with. But the experience needs to come up too, so um, that would that would also be nice. Uh, we're in the process of moving them like a G-Men, so we're not gonna we're not gonna set them to rest. We're gonna move them to Rangoon where they can sit in like a hundred thousand supplies and just let it wash over them and get them get them ready for a, for a fight. Uh, but it would be nice to have two tank brigades of like 100 tanks in each um, to, to go at the Japanese with. That would be pretty pretty awesome. Not sure... Oh, improvised. If he's not improved. Uh, reading comprehension, smart. Um, anyway, uh, I'm not sure I have a lot of other updates. I mean, this is a quiet turn. We're probably going to be dealing with a few quiet turns here. Um, but hopefully I'll get the turn back over to Lodric, um, maybe not tonight, but tomorrow, so we can have a quick turnaround on this one. 
Um, but yeah, uh, let's take a look here. What other ships are coming online here? We've got some cruisers. Or no, we actually already got the Dorsetsar, I think it was. Um, but we've got uh, some submarines in 12 days, the Illustrious in 12 days. Um, a tanker, some destroyers, some anti-aircraft cruisers. I want to say the Atlanta might have come online. I'm trying to remember where she's about to. No. She must have already come online then. Yeah, nothing's really changed on the Fiji line like a G-Man. Just kind of hanging out here. Just doing stuff. Am considering maybe landing some troops on Savi. I might do a bombing raid there to just kind of see what they have. Um, or maybe midway, I don't know. But um, let's see here. I'm trying to remember where I put the. I know the Atlanta's here. I just can't remember where. So Atlanta's currently in Task Force 219, which is actually transiting to South Africa. Presumably, we'll send them to uh, the Indian Ocean to join the carriers. But you can see here the Atlanta currently moving at full speed. It'll arrive off map in nine days. And then from there to the Indian Ocean to join the carriers. And this is just a phenomenal anti-aircraft uh, light cruiser with some great dual-purpose five-inch guns and a lot of them. So there's that. Um, in terms of other things for this turn, um, ground reinforcement schedule, two days for the Southwest Pacific, so MacArthur will be out of the Philippines by then, um, I think. Five days for a Chinese Corps arriving at Chongqing. 32nd Infantry Division arriving in six days in San Francisco. Two tank battalions arriving at Pearl Harbor in a week, although both restricted. Uh, 10th USAAF is arriving in Southeast Asia um, in 15 days. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's the situation that we find ourselves in tonight. Just make sure to chuck the Atlanta into a surface action. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what the uh, the Americans did with those CLAAs uh, in the Guadalcanal campaign. They're just like, hey, these things that are great for anti-aircraft, why don't we go ahead and throw them into a, into a surface action? I'm sure they'll be fine. Um, <laughs> so MacArthur will just clone himself. We'll have two. Oh, God. Is that how the game works? I'd love to replace MacArthur like for realism reasons in the Philippines with, uh, you know, with another commander, but it's so ungodly expensive to do that. Like if you go to, um, yeah. So if you try to go here and say, all right, MacArthur leave, then it's like 200 political points to put someone else in command. It's so dumb. So, but anyway, um, yeah, this is a short episode. Anything else you guys want to see while I, while we're looking at this? Trying to think of what else to show you guys in this map, but it's such a quiet turn. You know, maybe we should move these B-26s out of Suva, move them to Pago, and then we can hit Savi and see what's there with them. Because they don't have the range to hit from Suva. Uh, those ships, Grim, have mostly been withdrawn to other theaters. So I don't know that ABDA really exists from a meaningful perspective. So, like, the Exeter exists. Um, Houston was sunk off of uh, the coast of 
Malaya when we were engaging the Congo and or not the Congo, the Haruna and sank, sinking her. Um, but Exeter is alive. She's at Colombo. Do you have any upgrades? Not yet. Um, some of the Dutch ships like De Reuter is down at Perth. Um, but yeah, they're kind of all over the place. I think Houston's the only one of them that was sunk. Dutch friends are doing fine. I mean, they're surrounded. They're uh, they're besieged at Batavia. They've got level four forts, so that we did get up to that. They've got f- almost fifty thousand supplies, so they're doing well there. Um, you know, once enemy battleships come knocking, that'll change real fast. But for the moment, anyway, they're doing okay um, with uh, hanging out. You know, at Batavia, uh, surrounded by the enemy. But uh, their morale looks good, you know. Fourth KNIL regiment has ninety nine morale. Most of these units have really good morale, um, even if their experience levels aren't great. Some of them have decent experience, like the uh, Berisian KNIL regiment has forty eight experience. That's that's not terrible. Forty five for the Mariner Battalion, um, fifty for one of the HQ units here, but like twenty on what the hell? Like this unit is. Improvised AFV light 17. Okay, so I'd rather you guys have Stuart light tanks, but looks like World War One tanks. I think those are Churchill's in the image, but yeah. So anyway, guys, a pretty quiet turn, probably a couple of quiet turns coming up, although we did get to see a Mark 14 work, so that was nice. Uh, but that's going to do it for today's episode. Short episode, not a lot going on. We'll see how things shape up in the future episodes. Nice to see that Repulse is getting close to coming back online. That'll be exciting to have her back. But uh, that'll do it for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts below. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.